when I first started wholesaling myself or marketing to wholesale, it was because I was just trying to buy rentals at first. People had their little list. Most of the wholesalers have a little list of people that they would call when they had good properties. And I was never getting an opportunity to get those. Even if I was going to pay more, they didn't know because they wouldn't send to me. So finally, I was like, all right, forget it. I'll just start advertising and start buying them myself. Let's talk about networking. So um, we know each other because of networking, kind of like super networking. Um, but mm -hmm. but what is networking done for your business? And when when you first started really focusing on networking, you know, I guess how did you start to where you are today? Networking is very huge, and um, on the disc profile, if you know the disc profile, which has behavior styles, I am completely on the left. I am not a relationship type person. I'm a very task oriented person. So that makes it a little bit more, you know, a lot more difficult for me because I'm just more introverted and focused on tasks, aka checklists. Um, but when I first started, I was going to the uh, RIAs here in Oklahoma City, um, trying to network people, find out you know who was wholesaling, who was doing this, who was doing that. When I first started wholesaling myself or marketing to wholesale, it was because I was just trying to buy rentals at first and. People had their little list. Most of the wholesalers have a little list of people that they would call when they had good properties. And I was never getting an opportunity to get those. Even if I was going to pay more, they didn't know because they wouldn't send to me. So finally, I was like, all right, forget it. I'll just start advertising and start buying them myself. Um, but went to the RIAs. And, and that was really pretty much it of what I did. I have not been a great networker um, until the last three, three and a half years. Um, forced myself to get out of my comfort zone, went to a million dollar meeting, went to join Investor Fuel and just really, really focus on making those connections. And once I make the connections, I'm not the best. I'm not near as good as you are with uh, your postcards, uh, but reinforcing them as time goes on. Yeah, I, I think um, when you're a, a good person that shines through regardless, especially when you're around people for a certain amount of time. And I don't know all the, the right actual like psychology words, but once you've known somebody a few years and you've gotten in, in um, you know, involved with their, with their business, uh, you know, from a, from a little bit of an outside level or at investor fuel, a lot of people maybe don't know what we do there, but it's a, it's a mastermind. So an example is John is, and Amy will get up and they're going to talk about, you know, what they've done for the, previous quarter, but it's not about bragging. It's about here's, here's where we're stuck and we want to get unstuck here. Who's done this. And there's other guys and gals from Oklahoma uh, city, you know, in our, in our group, a couple few, and then there's people from all over the country. So you can get those answers. And sometimes, you know, it, it really just changes everything. But when you hear some of the stories, some of the personal stuff, and, and you don't have to get up there and share personal things, but a lot of times it comes out. And uh, mm -hmm. I think there's just, especially for guys, like we all think we're tough and all this, you know, all this jazz. And then when you, when you start talking about some things and kind of letting your guard down a little bit, uh, there's some, you know, you've got a couple of great friends in there and I know that, and like, you guys are always together. You're always eating, you know, at, at dinners mm -hmm. together. Not that you're not branching out, but like, you're excited to see a, f a few specific faces, right. When you, when you get to, when you get there. And uh, yep. I, th I think that goes, goes to your networking, you know, it's like, you're not the kind of guy who's talking to 9 million people, but you get those, you build those deep relationships. And a lot of times th those really carry you a lot further. I've met tens of thousands of real estate investors, honestly, or want to be real estate investors in my career. And I, I talk to probably 10 people regularly. So it's, what is that? You know, 10% would be a thousand. So it's like one tenth of a percent. Something like that, yeah, one tenth, one hundredth. Yeah. Right. So you got you got to weed through a lot, but um, when you get those relationships, you know it. it it's really uh, real estate is a it's a kind of a lone wolf business, they say, because in real estate investing, because you don't always have partners, and when your partner is your better half, then you guys don't have to really go outside of yourselves either too much. But then when you did. I think I'm sure um, once you did start networking a lot, you probably grew a lot more because your eyes were open. 